Hi, I am Dr. Arsalan Khan and today we are going to clear a concept of reducing and non-reducing sugars. The carbohydrates are basically referred to as sugars and these are categorized into two classes, the reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars. As their name indicates that reducing sugars can be oxidized and these reduce the other compounds. While the non-reducing sugars cannot be oxidized and cannot reduce the other compounds. So here we will describe these two classes on the basis of chemistry and chemical composition of the carbohydrates. As you know that the carbohydrates are referred to sugars, so these reducing and non-reducing sugars are the classes of carbohydrates, the saccharides. Reducing sugar may be defined as the carbohydrates in which the anomeric carbon is free. Anomeric carbon is the carbon, it is basically the first carbon which is derived from the carbonyl group. These can be oxidized and reduce the other compounds. So reducing sugars are the carbohydrate units or the saccharides which can be oxidized and these reduce the other compounds and components which oxidize these compounds. So these act as reducing agents, the reducing sugars. Examples are monosaccharides. So all of the monosaccharides like glucose, galactose, fructose, all of these are the reducing sugars. While the oligosaccharides and disaccharides also serve as reducing sugars with the exception case of sucrose. Sucrose is non-reducing sugar. We will explain the sucrose non-reducing nature in its structure. So first of all, I am going to draw the diagram of maltose and oligosaccharide are disaccharide maltose as we know that the maltose is composed of two alpha glucose units so alpha glucose plus alpha glucose and we know that the glucose has ring structure in aqueous media it has hexagonal structure this is carbon number one carbon number two three four this is carbon number five and carbon number six is attached to the carbon number five this is the first carbon which is derived from this carbonyl group so this is called as anomeric carbon and do remember that on the first carbon if hydrogen is on the upper side and hydroxyl is on the lower side this will be called as alpha glucose or alpha carbohydrate if the case is reversed and hydroxyl group is on the upper side and hydrogen is on the lower side so this will be called as beta glucose unit or beta carbohydrate so this should be kept in mind and i am emphasizing on that that the alpha carbon or alpha saccharide units are those saccharide units in which the hydrogen is present on the upper side of the first carbon and hydroxyl is present on the lower side of the first carbon so these structures are referred to as alpha saccharide units alpha sugars if the case reverses and hydroxyl group is present on the upper side of the first carbon of saccharide units hydrogen is present on the lower side of the first carbon so these will be referred to as beta sugars or beta saccharide units maltose is made up of alpha saccharide units both of the glucose molecules which are bonded in the maltose are of alpha nature they have hydrogen on the upper side of the first carbon and hydroxyl on the lower side of the first carbon so we will draw the diagrams of this maltose so this is the first glucose molecule this is alpha glucose in which hydrogen is on the upper side hydroxyl is on the lower side the second glucose molecule again second glucose molecule is also alpha sugar alpha glucose molecule on which hydrogen is attached on the first carbon upper side and hydroxyl is attached on the lower side of the first carbon so this is carbon number one two three four five and the sixth carbon so when these two glucose molecules join together the hydroxyl of first and hydrogen of the other these combine and form water molecules so water is ejected from these structures removed hydroxyl from first end and hydrogen from the second end leaving behind an oxygen atom so this oxygen atom will form a bridge between these two glucose molecules this is called oxygen bridge or glycosidic bond so the carbohydrates are joined together with each other by glycosidic bonds so now we have to focus on our topic the reducing sugar in our definition we have stated that the reducing sugars are those sugars in which there is anomeric carbon which is free and can be oxidized so this first anomeric carbon the anomeric carbon is the carbon which is derived from the carbonyl group this is the first carbon in the nature after oxygen so this is bound in this glycosidic bond so it is not free but in glucose number two this anomeric carbon this is free this can be further oxidized and can reduce the other molecules so this have free anomeric carbon so this was a structure of maltose and maltose has one free anomeric carbon so it will serve as reducing sugar reducing sugars are those sugars having at least one anomeric carbon which is free from the glycosidic bond or ring structure and can be oxidized and reduce the other molecules so this is the reducing sugar so the next class is non-reducing sugars it may be defined as these sugars cannot be oxidized 
and cannot reduce the others. So non-reducing sugars cannot be oxidized and they are incapable of reducing the other molecules which attach to these molecules. So these serve as non-reducing. So these serve as non-reducing sugars. The reason behind the non-reducing nature is these have no free anomeric carbon. Anomeric carbon is bound in the glycosidic bond. These, these molecules have no free anomeric carbon. Therefore, these cannot be oxidized and cannot reduce the other molecules which bind to these non-reducing sugars. Examples are sucrose and polysaccharides. We will draw the diagram of sucrose and, and we will explain that how this anomeric carbon is bound in the glycosidic linkage and is not free for oxidation. As we know that sucrose is made up of one glucose unit and one fructose unit. Glucose is of alpha nature and fructose is beta. So sucrose is formed by the combination of alpha glucose with beta fructose. So here we will draw the diagram of alpha glucose. This is a glucose molecule having carbon number 6. This is alpha glucose in which the hydrogen is present on the upper side of the first carbon or anomeric carbon. Hydroxyl is on the lower side. This serve as anomeric carbon. Similarly, the sucrose. Sucrose has pentagonal structure, but here it should be kept in mind that in case of the sucrose, the fructose attaches enantiomer. Enantiomer means the mirror image. This glucose molecule is attached to the fructose. Fructose has pentagonal structure. And it should be kept in mind that this fructose is of beta nature, beta fructose, and it is the enantiomer of the fructose. Enantiomer means mirror image. It means that the right will appear left and left will appear right. So right side will appear left. So here we will attach the carbon number 1. This is the carbon number 1. This is carbon number 2, carbon number 3, 4, 5 and then carbon number 6. Carbon number 1 has hydroxyl on upper end and hydrogen on lower end. So therefore this is called beta fructose. So this carbon in the ring has hydroxyl on the upper end and hydrogen at the lower end. So this will be called as beta fructose. It is in an tumor because C1 is present on this left side rather than the right side. So the here the hydroxyl group of the first and hydrogen of the second molecule these bind to each other and form water molecule. So water is released. So we have removed hydroxyl from this bond and hydrogen from this bond and leaving behind the oxygen molecule. This oxygen will bind these two molecules and will serve as glycosidic bond or oxygen bridge. So this oxygen is the glycosidic bridge or glycosidic bond. Glycosidic bond has been formed between the glucose and fructose molecules giving rise to sucrose molecule. So this is now a sucrose molecule. Here if we see the anomeric carbon, so the first derived carbon from the carbonyl group anomeric carbon is bound in the glycosidic linkage, it is not free and the second molecule it has this anomeric carbon which is derived from this carbonyl group, again it is bound in the glycosidic linkage and it is not free, both these anomeric carbons are not free, these are bound in this glycosidic linkage and therefore this cannot be oxidized and these sugars cannot serve as reducing sugars. So these are non-reducing sugars because both of these molecules have bound anomeric carbon molecules. These anomeric carbon molecules because of the captivity in this glycosidic bond. So these are the non-reducing sugars. Similar is the case with the polysaccharides in which the anomeric carbons of the all adjacent molecules are bound in the glycosidic linkage and cannot be oxidized. So therefore these are called non-reducing sugars. So this was all the difference between the reducing and non-reducing sugars. Reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars are, are based upon the anomeric carbon captivity and freedom. If it is free then these will be reducing sugars and if it is not free it is included in the glycosidic linkage. It is bound in the glycosidic linkage. So this will serve as non-reducing sugars. Thank you.